Hello, YouTube. My name is Alan, and it's that time again. Let's talk metal. Today, I went to a record show, and I'm here to give you the rundown on that. So, yeah, this record show is up in North Carolina. They put it on about three, maybe four times a year, so roughly every three to four months. I've been to it a few times before here in recent years, and there's usually a good amount of hard rock and heavy metal stuff present, which is one reason I go. Yeah, also, some family members tend to go there, so it's a chance to see them, grab lunch with them, and uh, catch up a little bit. So a good time is had by all. It's uh, close to a three-hour drive each way, so you know, it's not exactly next door, but it's not completely out of range. But yeah, I've been on the interstate for about six hours today, back and forth. So I'm tired, so I'll try to make this uh, relatively short and to the point. Found a decent amount of cool stuff and nothing that was particularly expensive either, which was nice. Some general impressions from the record show. There were a good number of dealers there. There were a couple of empty vendor tables. They might have filled in by the end of the show, but it you know, didn't feel like it was jam-packed with dealers like it has been most times in recent years. And the same can be said for, you know, people attending the show walking around. There was a decent amount of foot traffic, but it was not nearly as busy as the last few times I've been to this show. This isn't unusual for summer record shows. If you talk to dealers who are kind of on the record show circuit, they'll often tell you that summer shows can be a little bit slow just because, you know, people are off on vacation, doing other stuff not necessarily thinking about going and standing in the ballroom of a hotel somewhere looking through record boxes for you know, a few hours. So nothing too surprising there in terms of the attendance. But again, it was still good not to undersell it at all. A couple of other things I noticed, uh, as I mentioned last time I went to a record show, CDs are definitely in demand at shows. This was not the case a year or two ago. A year or two ago, I think about even this time last summer when I went to this show, very few vendors had CDs. Nobody was asking for CDs. It was almost completely vinyl. The last time or two I went, I've been noticing an uptick in the presence of CDs. And it was very noticeable this time. Lots of vendors had dusted off you know, their boxes of CDs and trotted them out. And a lot of people were looking through them. So still predominantly vinyl if you looked over the show in total, but a much, much bigger presence of CDs and people willing to buy them. Probably the last big trend I noticed was that it did not appear that nearly as many people were buying things as in some past shows. You know, there have been some times where this show was moving a lot of items. You constantly saw people reaching for their wallets, money exchanging hands, Today, I felt like it was probably a bit slower on sales. You know, the vendors I was talking to felt like they were having a decent day's business, but none of them seemed, you know, really blown away with how it was going. And that was the sense I got too. Again, a lot of people kind of, you know, looking around at stuff, but people were not pulling out, you know, big stacks of vinyl or big, uh, you know, chunks of CDs to, uh, you know, quickly purchase. A lot of people looking, asking about prices and stuff, but yeah, look like people were not in quite the same buying mood that they had been, you know, in the past couple of years going to record shows. Still a ton of metal and a ton of hard rock. Um, I got to the show around 9.30ish, looked around for a solid two hours, took a break for lunch again with family and friends. And then went back and looked around for at least another half hour or so. And I felt like basically I probably got to each of the metal boxes once. And this is not a particularly big show. It's just kind of your standard hotel, you know, ballroom, conference room kind of thing. So probably like between 40 and 50 vendor tables total. And a lot of them had at least a small section of metal, if not big sections of metal. So yeah, it basically it probably took me two to three hours to get through everything one time. So a lot to look at. With those bases covered, let's see what I actually got. First table I walked up to actually had some pretty good heavy metal CDs. I, the guy didn't have a ton of stuff. He'd been to a record show yesterday and sold a decent amount. So his boxes were running a little low. But yeah, uh, it, the CDs, nothing was really labeled. It was just like boxes. But I'd seen this 
guy at shows before. I think I bought a couple of things from him here and there. So as I just start looking through the CDs, again, it's just big plastic totes of CDs. You're praying to the metal gods. It's like, please let there be something in here that's not by Miley Cyrus. Well, first, they were alphabetized, so that helps. And second, Anacrusis begins with A. So right away, it's just like, oh, this is going to be a good tote. You don't just randomly have an Anacrusis CD mixed in with a bunch of junk. So yeah, had a reissue copy of Reason. This was the only one I didn't have a physical copy of. So grabbed that really quick. And he also had a copy of Suffering Hour. And again, these are metal blade presses, but reissues on uh, digipack ones in pretty nice shape. Not mint, but not bad. Uh, with Suffering Hour, I had you know, this version on CD, which was the Annihilation Complete demo, which the album was taken from. But yeah, I did not have the actual uh, Suffering Hour version itself. So added that to the stack of things to ask about. He had some different bootleg live album, like CDRs and stuff mixed into, some of which looked kind of interesting, but those are the kinds of things I get them, I play them once, I don't get them again. So unless it's a band or a show I'm really interested in for some specific reason, yeah, I will pass. But, you know, he had some Black Sabbath, some Deep Purple. It's like, those are cool, but I wouldn't really ever do much with them. But he had this, which I had not seen before. Um, it's by Confessor. Some of you will know this. It's a North Carolina doom metal band. They made an album called Condemned. It's kind of an underground cult classic with some folks. I always had a hard time getting into it because of the vocals. They're, they're very kind of odd. The, the music's kind of unique too. They're described on metal archives as technical doom metal. You're not going to see a lot of bands with that particular tag. But this is not the album. Um, I wasn't really sure what it was. It's like, you know, took it out and looked at it. It's got three tracks. Um, it's a CDR, but it is like pro printed. And so I was like, um, I don't know if it's a little bootleg thing or what, but it is $1. For $1, it goes on the stack with the two Anacrusis CDs, and I'll figure out what the heck it is, even if I'm not that nuts about the band. But wait, he had more. Uh, reissue of the Dark Star album. This was a new wave of British heavy metal band. They had one huge song from that era called Lady of Mars, and it is an incredibly good catchy number, great tune. Um, I had the original album ages ago, got rid of it at some point. But yeah, you know, for five bucks, I'll pick it up. This also, I think, just got a anthology reissue from No Remorse Records. I think they put out Dark Star at the same time, they put out the Mendy's Prey collection. This is an older version. This is, uh, I think, said 2013 on Rock Candy Records, which I does not ring any bells, so I don't know. Got to F, and he had a, the third Flotsman Jetsam album, When the Storm Comes Down. This one, notoriously not most people's favorite. I remember this being halfway decent, though. I have not heard it in a long time. Uh... But uh, Suffer the Masses, I remember being a very, very good song. Um, yeah, I don't remember what people's gripe is about this one. This may be one that has like really weird production or something. But again, for $2, yeah, I'll, I'll play it again and find out what it is. And again, you know, some of these, they're not brand new. The Flotsam and Jetsam has some marks on the disc. It's $2. That's like a pack of gum. Uh, yeah, add it to the stack. Uh, he had uh, an album by The Rods I've never seen before. What's it called? I don't even know. Brotherhood of Metal. Turns out this one's from 2019, so more recent one from them. Um, I like a lot of the early Rod stuff. I heard their one reunion album from like 2011. Did not like it very much. Don't know this one at all. But uh, it was, again, only a few bucks. All the CDs were, you know, I think, $5 for the Dark Star was the most expensive one. Most of them were one, two, or three bucks a piece. And, uh, well, here was another one that was five bucks. Uh, he also had a copy of Viking, Man of Straw. This was an old Metal Blade out band. I had a couple of songs by them on some of the Metal Blade compilations back in the day. Never got around to picking up one of their albums. This is their second. The first one's called Do or Die. I always kind of liked the songs on the, like, best of Metal Blade type comps. 
I just never quite got around to buying a Viking album. Today I did. Better late than never. So yeah, that is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, seven CDs within like the first five minutes of walking into the place. For the seven discs, he asked me 15 bucks. Just like, thank you. Yep, I'll take that. So yeah, off to a good start. You can't complain about the price, even, yeah, if some of them are a bit scuffed up or whatever. It's so, so what? That's, yeah, that's nothing. Let's see. Later on, I found a few more CDs from another vendor. He is at these shows pretty regularly. I almost always buy a handful of stuff from him because he gets some very good metal CDs. And again, they're very cheap. Um, three for $10. And I found two and then dug around and found a third. Let's see. He had um, Motorhead Sacrifice, an album I had a long time ago when it came out, but it's long since flown the coop. And he also had Motorhead Snake Bite Love. This one I never owned a copy of. I remember it being fairly good, kind of, you know, in the same vein as Sacrifice, but um, uh, I don't think I ever owned it. If so, I don't remember owning it. Um, so yeah, it's like, okay, two Motorhead CDs I don't have, and one of them that I like, Sacrifice is a good album. And then looking around for something else to round out the three for 10 deal, um, they had a pretty straightforward copy of Black Sabbath's Born Again which I've been meaning to give another chance. The Born Again album, yeah, it has very slowly warmed up with me over time uh, to the point where maybe now I'll actually, you know, it'll get over that hump and be like, yeah, yeah, okay, now it's really cool. I've always been, uh, yeah, had a few issues with this album, but I'm willing to give it another shot for, again, three for 10 bucks kind of thing. It, it doesn't matter that it has a hole punch in the UPC at that kind of price. So... Yeah, pretty good seed. That's, you know, 10 CDs for 25 bucks. That's how you want your record shows to work out. All right. So let's see. <clears throat> Up next, vinyl. Uh, different dealer who, again, he's always at these shows and always has some pretty good stuff. He has a weird mixture of like older vintage metal vinyl some newer stuff you'll have like a couple of relatively recent black metal vinyl items and then you know, a lot of your standard kind of you know 70s 60s 80s hard rocks and kind of all mixed together but uh it's always got a few cool metal things got two albums from him today one uh the venom official bootleg picture disc this is a live album from 1986 a venom live album's uh, don't necessarily have the best reputation for sound quality. I, I just never had this one. I've always seen it around. It's like, hey, you know, prices are pretty reasonable at the show today. It's, I'm not picking up, you know, tons and tons of stuff. Um, yeah, I think I'll pick that one up. He also had a second album that I wanted. Was really happy to find this. It's the second album by, I'm told that it's pronounced E-Trope. I did a video about this band uh, a while back and some folks had left comments, even though it's spelled Zotrope, uh, several folks that lived in the Chicago area back then said uh, the band actually pronounces it E-trope. Silent Z at the beginning? Sure. Okay, I can go with that. But anyway, yeah, second album, uh, Life of Crime. This is, you know, some inserts and stuff with it as well. Um, if I remember right, it's on a gray combat pressing. I pulled it out and looked at the thing. The thing that's kind of neat with the cover is it's actually a die cut cover. Each of these uh, squares is a window that's showing you pictures that are on the inner sleeve. So if you pull it out, it's just got a bunch of blank white squares. So kind of a neat little gimmick. But uh, yeah, this is a fairly good album. I just never had come across a copy of it for a decent price. And so, yeah put it together with the Venom. He dropped the price a little bit when I got the pair. So I was like, cool, uh, random Venom live picture disc that I never had picked up. And the second Zoetrope, which has been in the back of my mind to pick up when I stumbled across it. Today, I stumbled across it. All right, looking through some other boxes. One guy had a couple of really nice early ACDC LP pressings, not first pressings of the Australian stuff. They were the... I guess you technically would call them second pressings. It's like the blue Albert labels that don't have the kangaroos on them. 
nice items. I've got some of those, so I didn't really need them, but I was chatting with him about them. And looking through the rest of his boxes, he also had a copy of this, Blue, uh, Blue Oyster Colts Revolution by Night. Uh, this album I thought was pretty good when Marty and I did the Blue Oyster Cult deep dive with uh, Craig Zoller. It's been over a year ago at this point. And this one had kind of stuck in my mind. I was like, yeah, I should pick that one up sometime. Again, just when I come across it, you know, for a decent price. Well, he had it tagged at 25. I offered him 20. He was more than happy to take it. Everybody, you know, win-win situation there. So yeah, I think this was the last Blue Oyster Cult one I was looking to you know, actively pick up because I'd already gotten Club Ninja, which was the other kind of mid-80s one there that I wanted to. I've got that. Now I've got this one. So I think the Blue Oyster Cult shelf is about the way I want it. Let's see, there's two more vinyl items. The next one was interesting. Again, the guy had a kind of a very small section of metal stuff, and nothing you know particularly noteworthy, but nestled in with all the random stuff, he had an old uh, noise pressing of Running Wilds you know, under Jolly Roger. So I, huh, you never see Running Wild vinyl anywhere. At least I don't. And this is on, the, again, it's a white label with black print with the old noise, like in the kind of old English font script. Um, it has some condition issues. There is some ring wear on the top, front and back. The top seam has a split. It's several inches right here. I'm uh, going to have to do some tape on that. It has the original inner sleeve with it. It's a little bit wrinkled. It's got a stain on it. So yeah, it's not mint or anything. He had it tagged for 40. I looked over it and was like, eh, I might make him an offer on it, but I'll pass. And before I even offer anything, he's like, yeah, no, it's not in the best shape. How about we come down on that some? So like, eh, let's, yeah, if we can come down some, uh, I wouldn't, I didn't want to pay 40, 40 in this condition. I also didn't want to leave it there because again, you just very rarely see running wild albums out and about, but we worked on the price for a while and got to a number we were both happy with. So yeah, while it's not the cleanest copy in the world, certainly not too bad. And it may be the only Running Wild full-length LP I have on vinyl. I've got a few other Running Wild vinyl things, but it's like the original EP, some compilations, some bootlegs. Um yeah, actually, I don't think I had any of the other stuff. I have the whole discography on CD, but this might actually be the only one of these studio LPs I have on vinyl now. So, hey, good for me. It's one of my favorite bands, of course, and it's just a very uh, odd one. It was one of the last boxes I looked in for the day because, again, everything else he had was, you know, fine, but, you know, relatively kind of, you know, generic stuff you'd expect to find at a record show. And then an old noise pressing ducked right in the middle of it all. All right, then the last record I got. This is kind of a neat one and kind of an oddball one. Um, got this from a fellow I've bought stuff from before. He always has some really nice older, like original pressing thrash stuff uh, and a lot of other stuff too. Really knows his stuff, uh, different pressings and all. For example, today he had a copy of the old Anton LaVey, The Satanic Mass LP. It was the second pressing from 1969. Um, it's one of those kind of random collectible things. I've known about it for years. I have no real interest in owning it. But, you know, he was, I asked him about it just out of, you know, curiosity. He was nice enough to like, I was, and I made it clear, like, I'm not looking to buy it just curious about it and he was nice enough to take it down he showed me like you know where the second pressing is different from the other pressings and stuff so yeah really nice guy always pleasant to talk to and you know he had a couple of other you know older pressings on the back wall and he had this slayer show no mercy i'm like is that an original show no mercy he's like actually it's not it's an unusual copy I'm like okay what's unusual about it he's like it's a south korean pressing of show no mercy and i'm like come again <laughs> uh yeah it is a south korean pressing of the album uh give me a second this one's in one of those sealed bags but yeah and it's metal blade records but it's also uh 
J I G U G U. Not sure how you would pronounce it in Korean, but yeah, double checked it, of course. And yeah, it's a South Korean pressing of Show No Mercy. Let's see, turns out it was made in 1993. The album, of course, originally came out in 83, but uh, this particular South Korean pressing is from 93, so about 10 years later. And yeah, the vinyl's very clean. It's got this, uh, here's what the labels look like on it, kind of black, uh, pretty typical Metal Blade logo on it. It has the uh, insert with it as well. Pictures on one side. And then, yeah, liner notes, song titles and stuff. And I'm assuming the print is Korean because it's a South Korean pressing. No, the only real uh, noticeable flaw with it is, you know, it does have, you know, a hole punch in the corner. Some people don't mind these things at all. Some people absolutely refuse to own them. Um, I don't like them because it is, you know, like a physical chunk of the cover that is completely removed. But if the price is right, they're not deal breakers for me. Um, especially when it's like this one. Eh, I'll just leave that later. Yeah, this one, it at least does completely miss all of the artwork and the logo. It's not like it's you know, punched you know, right through the middle of the you know, logo or the demon's face or something. Sometimes you know, when they do different cut corners and saw marks, it tends to mess up the artwork a little bit. Yeah, this one's at least completely up here in the corner where it's just on the black uh, background. So it's like a South Korean copy of Show No Mercy that's a little too awesome to leave here. So again, we worked out a price that we were both happy with. I've bought some pretty nice stuff from him before. He always remembers me as like the guy who bought his original Rust in Peace uh, album a year or so ago. And yeah, like I said, super friendly guy, really knows his stuff. And this was just too neat an item to not have. Um, I, I haven't other vinyl pressing of this, I have an original metal blade uh, on the brown labels. The cover on that one you know, has some wear, I like a lot, but come on, how often are you going to find a South Korean version of Show No Mercy? There are some on Discogs, yes. You have to order them all from South Korea. Shipping is a real thing when that happens. He said, funnily enough, he found this copy when he bought a collection a while back in Tennessee. So somehow a copy of this made it from South Korea to Tennessee, which is not where you would expect to go and find a Korean press of a Slayer album. So yeah, that is that. I got 10 CDs and I got five pieces of vinyl. The total for everything is around, I think it's either just over or just under $200 for the day. So not bad as kind of exactly as hoping to spend about that much at most. It's like, I'd really like to keep it around 200 today maximum. And I kind of came in right on budget. So pretty happy with that. Got to clean these up and give them some spins. See what I think. A lot of these I'm familiar with already. I mean, I think I have a decent handle on what Show No Mercy sounds like. I just have to play this copy to see how it sounds. But there are a few things I'll spend some time with. Again, Snakebite Love, I don't remember much about. Uh, the Viking album, I've never heard. The Rods album, I've never heard. I uh, definitely need to brush up on that Flotsam and Jetsam and on Anna Crucis is a Reason. It's been a very long time since I heard that one. Uh, the Blue Oyster Cult, The Running Wild, uh, those I know fairly well. Zotrope, I'm looking forward to hearing again, and the Venom picture disc. We'll see what the sound quality is like. That uh, Again, a lot of Venom live stuff doesn't have great sound quality. It's probably going to be something I play once or twice, see how atrocious it sounds, and uh, then just have a cool Venom picture disc hanging out. So, that is that. Now, let me stop talking, and let's talk metal in the comments down... <laughs> oh, excuse me. In the comments down below. What do you think? Good deals? Did I pay too much for stuff? Uh, 
Is any of this just garbage that I should have left behind? Maybe that Venom picture disc really, really isn't worth the bother. But uh, yeah, it's early Venom. It's at least it's mid '80s Venom. They hadn't completely lost the track just yet by then. But yeah, have you been to any record shows yourself lately? Are you noticing any of the same patterns I am, where yeah, attendance a little lower, people not paying in or buying nearly as much stuff, but lots and lots of CDs showing up? Uh, let folks know in the comments below so that if they're heading to a record show in the near future, they might have an idea of what to expect to find. That'll do it for now. So until next time, everybody take care. And as always, keep banging your head.